Hello Jamie, hello horse. Gatwick Airport, heading off to Florida, then Canada to confront another father. It's always a bit of a challenge to do these intercontinental flights and find where these guys live and give them the good news. A, you're a father and B, it's gonna work one of three ways. One, you consent in the best interest of the child to do the right thing. Two, you don't consent, in which case we fight you and we'll come after you for a costs order. And three, bury your head in the sand and pretend it's going away. And here I am standing on your front doorstep. And that's why I go through all the effort to travel to where the fathers are, because when you confront them on their front doorstep, that's when they know we're not going away. We're here to help their child. We're here to help the best interest of the child. And we're going to require the father to do the same thing. Airport time is not wasted. Last minute checks with the pro bono lawyer we've got on the ground. You know, sometimes you think of these guys and you're like, you want to really hold them to account. and You want to get angry at them and fight them. But the best interest of the child has to dominate everything we do and think about. And the best interest of the child is a consent order and getting the father, no matter how creepy, to do the right things. So we've landed in Calgary now, and today's the day we go and confront one of the fathers. So we have to be at our intimidating best as a lawyer. Give their father a way out cheaply and easily if he consents to act in the best interest of the child, but to make it very clear to him that if he doesn't act in the best interest of the child, then we will continue to pursue him and that we're not going away. This is my second time in Calgary. Last time I was here, I was visiting the polar bears up in Churchill. There's a flight in the last two weeks of October and first weekend of November each year where you can fly from Calgary up to Churchill, spend the day on the tundra buggies looking at the polar bears and then fly back to Calgary. Today also will be the first time that I meet Max Blit in person. Max is our uh, pro bono uh, lawyer here in Canada. He's done a tremendous job on behalf of the kids. So I'm really looking forward to meeting him. So today is another, not D day, but an F day. So we're about to head off to uh, serve the father with all the paperwork necessary and the Canadian law. Continue on 1st Street, southeast south for one and a half kilometres. So we're heading up now to the father's house. This father has done his best to hide from us. He had a false address in on his court file, but we had a private investigator work pro bono and find him, so we know actually where he lives. One of the amusing things for me is to get to his house from uh, where I'm staying, you turn left out of the apartment, turn right up McLeod Trail, which basically then goes to the bottom of uh, this father's street. Why that amuses me, being named Andrew McLeod, is he, now that I'm going to be etched into his memory, every time he leaves his house and turns either left or right down McLeod Trail, he's going to think of me. And I hope what that does is prompt this guy to think of the daughter he abandoned in Philippines and what a positive difference he could make to this girl's life. So I'm right outside the father's house. No one was home at first, but while waiting here, he arrived home in this uh, people mover van here and he's gone in. I've knocked on the door and he's not answered. Uh, so he knows I'm here. No, man. So day two now. Yesterday, we, I got out to the father's house, found it, identified it. Um, he, while I was over the road speaking to the neighbors to tell them who I was and to not panic if they see me wandering around suspiciously, Handily, the neighbors were Filipina, so they understood entirely the problem that we're trying to solve. 
Uh, he arrived home and I saw him go from his car into his house, but then of course, I think he knows we're looking for him. So he didn't answer the knocking of the door. Um, so I'm going out now at uh, 7 a.m. and hopefully gonna get him before he starts his day. I know which is his car, I can park in front of it and I can just wait for him to turn up. So day two, um, I have my water and I need to get my coffee. Can I have a large black coffee, please? And a chocolate donut, if you've got one. Thank you. That's his house and his car's not there. He leaves very early in the morning, doesn't he? Your destination is on the right. He is not at home. So 20 past seven in the morning on day two and Norman's car is not outside his house. So one assumes he's left for work in the morning given that he came home yesterday at 3.30 in the afternoon. That's not a surprise. I'm just gonna wait a little while to see if he's forgotten something and comes back. He's running, that is him in his car there. I'm just gonna try and sit in his uh, blind spot. Hopefully he won't see me. Thank you. Thank you. Max might call you later on, but am I able to take your name just so I can yep. Max Thank you. So we're outside the police station. I chased after Norman. We did a little bit of a co uh, car chase around the streets, and he's pulled in to the police station here to complain about my harassment. So the police put him in one room, put me in another room. I explained what we're doing and that he's got a child in the Philippines. So the police said, what do you need to do? I said, I just need to serve him. So the police escorted me into the room where he was and I said, you're served. He's then come out of um, the police station and looky loo in my car, there are the papers. So rather than taking them, he's put them back through the crack of the window of the passenger seat of my ca of my car, slipped them in through there and gave them back to me. So I've got the papers back, but I have the witnesses of three police to say he was served. So we've just served Norman with the papers under the supervision of three police officers after a small car chase. Uh, he's run out and dumped the papers back in my car, so I'm just gonna go past his house and leave the papers back at his front door.